right, it is five o'clock, so I will call to order this meeting of the Finance and Personnel Committee. Uh, we'll begin with the roll. Alder Ackley? Here. Alder Faldi? Here. Alder Flicky Paneski? Here. Alder Perella? Here. Mitchell is here. We have a full committee and a quorum. Uh, will you all please join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the for all. All right, because we have enough visitors today, let's move on to item four, the introduction of committee members and staff. Alder Ackley, if you'd like to kick off. I'm Ackley, I'm the for Alder Person. I'm Barb Feldy. I'm council president and district one representative. And I am Roberta Felicki Paneski, district two council vice president and vice chair of finance. And I'm Trey Mitchell, district nine and chairman of the committee. And Dr. Perella, the person for district seven. Alderman Heidemann, 10th District, Southside. Somebody turned my microphone off. Um, usually do the whole room, Director Bebo, if you'd. Thank you. All right, with that, we'll move on to item number five, which is the approval of the minutes from our March 13th meeting. Is there any discussion on the minutes? If not, we would be looking for a motion to approve. We have a motion and a second, then seeing no discussion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. We'll move to item number six, which is RO number 126 of 2223, submitting a communication from the Harbor Center Business Improvement District, requesting that the city of Sheboygan release all funds collected on their behalf and those funds allocated to them for fiscal year 2023. Good evening. Uh, this is an annual uh, request from the Harbor Center biz bid. So we have already uh, given them the funds that we have collected. Um, this is just to file tonight. Thank you. Questions, comments on this item? If not, we'd be looking for a motion to file. We have a motion and a second then, seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, and the motion passes. Item number seven uh, is a direct referral of resolution number 161 of 2223, approving the financial year 2023 one year annual action plan for the community development block grant program submission. Is there anybody that would like to speak to this item? I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Sure. Questions from the committee? Otherwise, I would anticipate there's some discussion coming up if you'd like to stick around. Uh, Alder Perella? I just wanted to comment that I would be abstaining on this because my company is, the company I work for is included. Thank you. Alder Flicky Paneski. Thank you. Um, I, I noticed that the um, original dollar requests were prorated down. Can you talk about how you did that, the methodology? Sure. Uh, so we had um, 
a new agency this year as well as two agencies that have applied previously but did not get funded last year because they did not submit. So if we were to fund all of the applicants, that would include the Salvation Army, East Boyden County Interfaith, and the abode, um, we would need to reduce the amount allocated per agency. Um, we had 217,000 in requests and we can give out about 130. So I basically, in talking with Chad, reduced it by the percentage of increase for 2021 to 22, and then we did decreased it by that same percentage. <clears throat> Say that last part again. Um, so we looked at whatever their percentage of increase was from 21 to 22. Correct. Um, so for Lakeshore Cap, that was a 40% increase okay. year over year. We reduced their allocation by that same percentage so in our they, recommendation. They got no increase. No. And, and you followed that methodology all the way through? Correct. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion on this item generally from the committee? This is going to be a multi-parter. We'll need to amend in the final figures that the committee is recommending. But before we jump into the individual parts, if not, uh, Elder Heidemann. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, we're the community of uh, partners, community development in that category. I'd just like to get some, it says comprehensive plan update, $30,000. Program administration, $173,000, and I don't know what Section 8, 108 payment is. Could you just give me an a, a explanation on that, please? Sure. Um, so Section 108 is our payment for Uptown Social for the money that we borrowed. So we have an annual payment coming out of CB, CDBG for $160,000, I think, for the next 10 years. Um, administrative costs would be salaries for staff. So my salary is largely CDBG funded. Um, I know part of the planning director, part of other pieces of our department. Okay. Um, and the $30,000 plan amount is, uh, it's time for us to update our comprehensive plan. And that's proposing, or looking to fund, I guess, and a consultant to do that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, Elder Flaky Paneski. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the the comprehen comprehensive plan, and mm -hmm. I'm going to do a little background here. It's 10 years old, or uh, 12, and we have to do every 10, and we got to buy your leave for two years. Um, I'm understanding it's not an option. We must do a comprehensive plan. In, um, I was part of the uh, community group 10 years ago or 12 years ago that was part of it because of redevelopment authority. And at that point, we hired Vanda Wall. And I, I actually brought, I tend to keep my plans. There they are. Um, and, and it includes a great deal of... Um, mapping and uh, mm -hmm. uh, housing strategies, et cetera. And this, this, the city has done a housing study. Um, we have done a strategic plan, which we talked about and we did not adopt, but the process was done. And um, I'm understanding again, from redevelopment, I'm understanding that Vanda Wall was, was asked to provide our maps and our mapping mm -hmm. from previously. And that, that's really the meat and potatoes of, of the plan. And they provided that to us electronically. Um, I don't know how far the staff is into updating, but I know that that piece is done. I know that the housing piece is done because we've done that already. Um, the community input, by and large, was part of it. So I question why we're spending $30,000 to do it. Um, so I know that uh, Chad did think that we could handle that in-house. Um, 
because it's really just updating the narrative. So I'm regrettably oh. Chad is in here, but okay. Oh, okay. So so I guess the comprehensive plan. There's a lot of different components to it, um, and Elder Flicky Paneski is correct. We did go out for some RFPs on this. Um, as well, so we are currently out of compliance with the state. This is a document that we have to update every 10 years. I think we're 12 years into it right now. Mm -hmm. And if you look at where the last comprehensive plan is, there's many different levels to it. Um, and it kind of is the, I would say it's kind of the, phys the physical strategic plan of the city where we're gonna be aspirational for economic development as well as housing. I would disagree that the housing part is done. It's not done. We have to make sure that uh, um, parts and the, the study are implemented in, in the comprehensive plan as well. And I know that there's a lot of discussion about additional dwelling units um, um, and other forms of housing reforms that we'd want to in implement. And we'd have to do that in the comprehensive plan and then down, then down the road um, work to update and modernize our zoning code as well too. Our, our current comprehensive plan, if you flip through there, Alder Flicky Paneski, mm -hmm. there's um, talk about the casino on South Pier um, as well as the strip mall um, on the Willow Creek Preserve. Um, so parking structures on South Pier. So there are some major components when you talk about economic development and land use strategy that need to be updated. And that is another big uh, comprehensive part uh, of that as well. Does that, did, did an, did that uh -huh. answer kind of more of questions? Some of it, some of it. Yeah, we are getting a cheaper deal. Okay, city attorney will take it. I'm okay. gonna add that you're really going beyond the scope of the the, what, what you're actually voting on today, that's merely a whereas clause that tells you you've already approved all that. You already budgeted for those things. What you're approving is the last page. You've got to come up with the numbers for the public service organizations. The other numbers that are in the whereas clause, is all, you, that's done already. You, you all voted for that. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you, Attorney Adams. Mayor, Abby. Yeah. Take it, Steve. Yeah, I was Take it, Steve. Uh, part of the 2012 comprehensive. So Steve Soklowski from um, Manager of Planning and Zoning uh, Planning Department. Comprehensive plan, someone indicated that it has to be done. It's, there's nothing that necessarily says that it has to be done. It's common practice to keep up to date with the plans. Obviously, it's 2012 when that was adopted. And as the mayor said, um, there are several things that are um, out of date. Um, but as far as the comprehensive plan, we did send out some RFPs. The numbers did come in pretty expensive for what was going to be required. Um, typically, when we're spending these types of dollars, we put an RFP out to get multiple uh, 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 organizations to apply for those dollars. So I'd have to talk to the city attorney in terms of that, but I obviously you talked about the 30,000 being in there. But uh, the comprehensive plan is a document that is used as a tool for future development in the city and the zoning ordinance is the tool that implements that, uh, those policies. So if I can answer any more questions, I'm willing to do that. I don't know if I hit anything that you're after. Um, but I'm here to answer yeah, questions as well. Outside the scope, so you're really going beyond the scope of the motion. So re what you should be talking about is the recommendations for the community housing, the other the, for the public sector organizations. The, the rest of it, that's all just background. Plus. It's just background. Sure. Okay. No, I, that makes sense. I guess I was somewhat wondering why we had two separate lists in two different sections, and one of them was not included in the actual action of the resolution. I will thank everybody nonetheless for educating us a bit on comprehensive plans. And I guess as chair, I'll use my privilege to rule that just barely within bounds is germane to the conversation for now. In that case, this won't be as multi-part. Uh, looking through the resolution on the final page, we have the finance and personnel committee recommendations. I believe the committee has all seen the recommendations from staff for the figures and if memory serves in prior years we usually begin with those numbers and if there's any desire for further changes we make them to that uh, foundation i believe we'll have to amend these on this time so we would be looking for an amendment 
to add the staff recommended. So you, before you can amend it, you need to. We haven't had the motion yet. Bring it on, on, yeah. That's a good point. On the resolution itself, would anybody have a motion to approve? So moved. And I am understanding, just so I get this two-part thing Oh, the clerk, you've been asking before you move on. Do we Oops. have a second? To put the resolution on the floor for further discussion? The chair will second. Other Flick Vanesky. So I'm understanding we kind of use the whereas is as backgrounds, and the only thing we're looking at are the are the not for profits that were reduced to the previous year's <coughs> budget. Right, so you need to come up with numbers. I don't know if there was something not on the agenda that gave recommendations as to those numbers, but what you need to do is come up with, you need to amend the uh, resolution so as to provide actual numbers that you're gonna be giving to those four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 organizations. Um, and the only, the only two that are, have already been sort of determined are the two housing ones, Partners for Community Development at 40,000 and Habitat for Humanity at 22.5. The other, the other organizations, you've just got to come up with how you're going to spend the remainder of the dollars, which is in the whereas clause, 129,794. Thank you. All right, now that we actually have the motion in front of us, if we would like to begin the process using the staff recommended uh, Figures. I would ask for a motion to amend uh, the finance and personnel recommendations section of the resolution so that it reflects funding in the amount of $12,500 for Lakeshore Cap, $42,493 for Shoreline Metro, $15,000 for Family Services Association, $3,350 for Family Connections, $11,500 for Big Brother Big Sisters, $4,900 for Flawless Hoops, $27,000 for the Salvation Army, $7,000 for SCIO, $6,050 for the Abode, and that would be the end of the amendment. Do we have such a motion? Do we have any motion for? I need a so moved. So moved, yes. Do we have a second? Chair will second the motion. We don't have these figures in our packet. Uh -uh. Yeah. They're yes, please. The, they're not in the agenda. They're, they're was not included with the. I think Chad emailed me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he provided the spreadsheet. Yeah. It's not even the right guy. I'm thoroughly confused. So not housing. Are we able to get the? Did uh, we see it? I've got it plugged in. Uh, 
Can you bring up my computer? Do we have to push it? Send live podium. Thank you. I was sticking up in the drawer. Just given to us now, I would have liked a little bit of time to peruse it and maybe ask some questions. Um, it was previously sent out, um, I believe it was last week, by Director Pelashek via email. Okay. Thank you. Obviously, I missed that. Do we have any other discussion from the committee. So the very long amendment that I suggested and that Elder Flicky Paneski moved to make would be adding the row of figures that are highlighted in yellow up at the top here as the committee's recommendation for funding uh, in the public service area with CBDG funds. These are also the staff recommendation. Because it's not an official document, because it wasn't provided with the agenda, the, the motion that will come out of here has to give the exact numbers, even though you're reading. And that's the one you gave. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Yeah, I can't see them. <laughs> Me neither. Elder <laughs> Flicky Paneski? Yes. Thank you. So let's. Let's take this from the top and go back down again. The numbers that were read were also the numbers that staff recommended for all of these not-for-profits. Is that accurate? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that was at least my intention. Yes. I will remind everybody we're voting on the we're currently discussing the amendment right now that is adding these figures. Is there any other discussion, questions, or comments? If not, all in favor of the adopting the staff recommendations for funding as the Finance and Personnel Committee's recommendations as was stated in the amendment, uh, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Abstentions? Alder Perella, all right. Chair votes aye. The amendment passes. So we would be back on the resolution that was attached with the previously discussed figures now being amended onto it. Is there any other discussion on the resolution as amended? If not, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstentions? All right, chair votes aye. The ayes have it and the motion passes as amended. Wow. <laughs> I think that went smoother than I anticipated Whoa. it. <laughs> Good. All right. That brings us to item number eight, which was a direct referral of resolution number 162 of 2223, which authorizes entering into a collateral assignment of TIF agreement with the Sheboygan Press LLC and Cardinal Capital Development LLC regarding the redevelopment of the former Sheboygan Press building at 632 Center Avenue in favor of First Business Bank. So I've reviewed it. I have no objections to it. It's 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 appropriate, but it did have to come back to council for approval. So recommending your approval. Thank you. Questions, comments from the committee? If not, we would be looking for a motion to approve on this one. So moved. All right, we have a motion and a second, then seeing no further discussion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it and the motion passes. Next up, we have item number nine, which was a direct referral of resolution number 163 of 2223, updating the job description for the position of city administrator for the city of Sheboygan and authorizing the director of human resources and labor relations to initiate the hiring process for the position. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so 
as you see, the job description is attached. Generally, job descriptions would not come to council to be approved as long as the job is staying in the same grade and the same duties. However, given that this uh, position is uh, directly um, responsive to you, you are their supervisor. Um, we're bringing it here uh, for you to approve before we move forward in the hiring process. Uh, the majority of the job description did not change from what it used to be. Um, language was just uh, clarified and added to make sure that there was a clear distinction in what the job duties are for the city administrator, as well as putting them um, in an order of importance, if you want to call them that, uh, but classifying uh, the job descriptions and essential duties um, together. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Any discussion from the committee? Elder Perella? Yes, there are two um, comments and questions. So in the, um, in the education and experience section, we mm -hmm. say master's degree or greater from accredited college or university or bachelor's degree with a minimum of seven years of city administrative experience, blah, blah, blah. And then we say um, that position requires at least seven years of progressively responsible work experience. So seven years are requested, required anyway, right? So what's the difference then between the, someone who comes with a bachelor's degree with a minimum, we say we require a minimum of seven years with a bachelor's degree, but we require seven years anyway. Yes, yeah, so, so with the bachelor's degree as it's written currently, if you only have a bachelor's degree, the job description requires that you have been a city administrator for seven years if you don't have a master's degree. However, if you have a master's degree, we're saying that you need seven years of progressive experience. So, but it doesn't have to be as an administrator with that master's degree. Perfect, thank you. And then I would like to add a statement. Go ahead. Um, among the... Yes, I would say among the, the, uh, the essential duties, one statement, and it doesn't matter to me where to add it. Um, so I don't know if I have to, shall I, st shall I start the motion on that right away? To, to change. To I, don't, I don't want to amend, I want to, uh, better, I want to amend by adding one statement among the essential duties. So what you're approving is the resolution, mm -hmm. not the attachment. Okay. So are you looking to add something to the resolution or to the attachment? So obviously I'm trying to add something to the attachment. Will that be an option for us to do that in a different context or not? So the pro I should Mike, so I can be heard if there's anybody in line, since I always complain about that myself. Um, if, if you want to make a change to the document, what you probably should do is reject this and send it back for, um, for further discussion to, to the group that's, um, mm -hmm. that created it. Because what you're approving is the resolution itself. Or as an alternative, I would suggest approving the job description and authorizing the Director of Human Resources to amend the job description as needed with approval of insert here so that the whole thing doesn't have to come back again. Again, normally job descriptions wouldn't need to come to you. So you could say what the suggestion is that you want added, approve the resolution as is with an amendment allowing the HR Director to make any necessary changes to the job description before it's posted. Is that a fair yeah. statement? Which that implies that I would come to the director of data uh, to, with my recommendation. Oh, yeah, or you could just say it now. And... Okay. Elder Perello, what would be the item you'd like to add to the essential duties section? Yes, so just briefly a background. I want to make sure that uh, the individual we hire is going to be um, equitable and ethical with all department heads, direct reports, and common counsel. And I know we have addressed that in other pieces of the description, but I think it is worthwhile to uh, reiterate that. So I would like to add that 
the city administrator will deploy an engaging, equitable, and ethical demeanor with all department heads, direct reports, and common counsel. Uh, Director Westbrook, I'm going to defer to your expertise on this one. Yeah, so, so again, I don't, I think what you're saying is um, in line with the job description and would be something that uh, I would normally be able to do on my own for any other job description because it's not adding significant responsibilities, it's not changing the scope of the job. So again, assuming that council passes this and then gives the HR director the ability to change this job description before it's posted to include any additional recommendations that don't change the scope, uh, I have no problems at all adding a language like that because again, it doesn't contradict anything that is not already in there. Thank you. Okay, so to do anything along those lines, then we would need to amend the actual resolution. I imagine we, you would want to add a be it further resolved clause. Well, it would, what, what Adam said is what you probably want to do. I, you said it better than I would, Adam, so go ahead. <laughs> Tell her what the motion should be. <laughs> uh, well, so first a motion to approve the resolution would need to be on the table. Yep. It would, and you would think I'd remember that after that's okay. Forgetting already once tonight. Let's at least get ourselves to that point. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. We have motion and a second. All right, please continue. So if, based on what Alderman Perella has said, I think a motion to amend to allow the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations to adjust the job description before posting would be an appropriate amendment to this. You said something about changing the scope before. That no, I'm saying that. what she's suggesting doesn't change the right. scope, so right. it falls in line with what a normal job description change would be, which is why I don't see any issue with adding that language to this. Okay. But the amendment itself would just be to allow, authorize the Director of Human Resources to amend the job description before it's posted. So, Alder Perella, I make a motion to approve um, with the um, uh, allowing the with the amendment of allowing the director of um, uh, HR to make um, changes which do not impact the the scope of the description. Okay. All right. So we have an amendment proposed to authorize the. Director of Human Resources to make further changes to the job description that do not change the actual scope. That is correct, thank before you. Before the job is posted, thank you. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. The discussion is now on the amendment. Questions, comments from the committee? If there's no discussion then on the amendment, I will ask all in favor to please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye, the ayes have it, motion passes. We are back to the actual resolution, now as amended. Do we have any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of approving the amended resolution? Please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it and the motion passes. Thank you, Director Westbrook. Mm -hmm. Next up, we are on item number 10, which is a direct referral of resolution number 164 of 2223, authorizing the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations to enter into a service contract with GovHR to assist in facilitating and co-conducting the city administrator recruitment process for the city of Sheboygan. Thank you, Chair. Uh, so again, uh, under our current ordinance, um, generally service contracts under $50,000 are something that department heads can recommend and approved by the city administrator. And a little with the absence of a city administrator, uh, we're coming to all of you uh, for that. Um, as stated in the resolution, and you can see in the attachment from GovHR, um, I have made the 
decision and recommendation to move forward with GovHR, assuming you approve it, um, to help in this recruitment. Obviously, this is a very big position. We plan on doing a nationwide search for this position with a focus in the Midwest, only because most likely the majority of candidates will come from the Midwestern region. However, it will be a national uh, search for that. Uh, just to give you an idea, my recruitment process, um, which you all engaged Baker Tilly for, um, was right under $27,000 uh, that you paid for the HR director's recruitment. And I'm sure I was worth every penny of it. Uh, but this amount is in line with uh, the other industry standards. Um, as it says in the resolution, I didn't go out for RFP on this. Um, we have enough experience with the other places listed and through um, contacts and communications with other communities that have utilized all three services listed here. Um, it is my recommendation to move forward with GovHR. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Questions or comments? Do we have a motion to approve? So. Motion to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the item itself? Seeing none. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have item 11. This is discussion only, a letter from Aaron Ginther regarding legal counsel for two claims filed. This was a communication that I received uh, based on the date of the letter just after I could forward that on to the agenda last time. It asks that it be shared with the committee, so including it on the agenda here was sharing it as requested. Do we have any discussion on item 11? Going once, do we have any discussion on item 11? Last call. We'll move on to item 12, which is a note that our next meeting date is April 10th. And with that, we have exhausted our agenda and our chair, and we are looking for a motion to adjourn. <laughs> so moved. We have a motion and a second for adjournment. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed. Chair votes aye. The ayes have it. The motion passes. We are adjourned. Aye.